So this is the recording of Selendines, and this character, who hasn't got a name, has got intriguing purple flushing um, over the grey and over the green. So this is in more detail, and you can work out a kind of a pattern, a kind of flecking and a kind of smudging. So this is next to the one that we just looked at, and again it has a, a, a character all of its own. There's a variation between the leaf on the left and the leaf on the right, and that's part of the the intrigue of mixing up your celandines. So this is a general view of one which I have spotted in previous years with a sort of browny golden markings uh, over the purple. And my inclination is to call it golden windows as if those brown bits which aren't quite gold anyway are sort of ways to look through in a stained way. So this is a very small suggestion of with the purple markings down the midrib and going off to the sides of a name of collar and tie which I think should be the name of a celandine but I'm not quite sure this is exactly the one. This is part of a of a of a spectrum of how the purple coloration in the leaf can seemingly not exist at all in the most central leaves and then maybe as the leaves age you get these little tufts and then the tufts sometimes suffuse out as in the leaf on the on the left here but bearing in mind it can't really be a stable pattern if the central leaves are, are behaving so differently. But it's part of the joy of celandines is that you can hardly tell what a plant's going to do from one season to the next. So this is a similar form, but the purple work in the leaf comes out more as a freckle. So the temptation is to call this freckles, but you can see a smaller leaf more or less in the centre of the picture, which has hardly got its freckling act together. So the purple work here is uh, again something which is difficult to, to, to predict because the other leaves on the same plant seem to have hardly any purple in at all. So this is one which has maintained a sort of stability over the last two to three years and I'm looking for, hoping for, a, a red coloration, although to be honest I, the best I can say about it is it's a sort of dirty pink colour between the purple, maybe even more of a brown, but other days it suggests a sort of red tinge. Well, what catches my eye on this one is the brown coloration on the top left celandine. And it also gets slightly reflected in one of the leaves on the plant to the bottom right at the back. But then it's also, that one's got a leaf which is nearer to the purple as well. So this is quite a shiny purple form and it doesn't seem to have quite decided whether it can fill the purple completely or whether it's going to leave the veins marked out in green and there's also little points of green on the around the edges of the leaf. So this one has 
remain stable for maybe 10 years and it's called Kingscote because it was discovered in the in the churchyard at Kingscote in Gloucestershire and I'm pleased with this because it has remained stable whereas previous yellow leaved celandines have reverted and become variegated after two or three years. This is one called Chegro because it was discovered in a ditch at the in the village of Chegro in Wiltshire and this has um, got two shades of green which is a bit subtle but at the same time it does keep that form well and is probably at least 25 years old since I discovered it in that ditch and it's also got a purple flushed campion which is um, progeny of a, of a purple campion that we discovered in, um, in Cornwall called Inane but this isn't purely inane because it's not quite purple enough. So this is a purple one which comes under my category of petrol spillage because there's a kind of um, iridescence which is only discernible on some days where it seems to me to have a bit of blue underlying the purple. Um, so many of these purple spillage plants were discovered by Rosie Castle in the Forest of Dean. Um, I th yeah, so that's part of an ongoing story. So this is another one which I think has got this bluey iridescence to it. Next to the next to the Chegro. I don't know whether that makes it easier or harder to see. This is scarcely discernible, but we've got a basic purple, and then we've got slight grey movements, slight greying in 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 sectors as you go out from the middle. Yeah, like a ghostly greyishness coming through the purple. And here we have the, the start of the experiment with browns and there are two that have been named as Mr. Brown and Mrs. Brown and this one, because of the slightly more yellowy texture, I think this could be Mrs. Brown. This is a bit of a confusion but there seems to be like sectors going on and there is one like this which I have called camouflage but I'm not convinced that this is the original plant that I call camouflage. So I'm not sure I noticed this before this to, before today when we do the filming and I just am amazed at how all these different colours can combine in a sort of abstract fashion in one leaf and yeah. So this is another one which, because we're doing this filming, I've suddenly realised that we've got growing. It's growing in the front garden underneath a big cryptomeria. And what's remarkable to me about this is how brightly it's shining. And I can't remember ever having seen a celandine shine so brightly as this. So there are about three things going on in this picture that the first one is the sort of tufty, pubic, hairy sort of thing which is in the more or less the middle of the shot and although I have called plants pubic hair before I'm not sure that they, they keep it going for from one season to another and I think the purple grows out but and the, at the same time you've got this little flecking man on the sort of about um, three o'clock so that could be another another freckly one so this is part of the of the general confusing picture of how purple 
moose across plants and the leaf at the top has got the purple as if it's going down into the veins so it's like a purple veined thing with a sort of suffusion of purple in the middle so middle of the picture is a sort of astral explosion on the abstract art design scheme of things with a very slightly suffused leaf at nine o'clock of a different plant and then a Mr. Brown coming up at, at uh, two o'clock. That is probably in the front garden outside the living room window. So to change the subject from the from the Celandines, at the same time we have this the germinating honesty called the optimist. If all goes well gives me pink and purple and two shades of green and white. So this is Lunaria annua the optimist.